authorities in Yemen have begun the removal of street vendor stores, waste and stagnant water to fight a cholera epidemic that has killed over 1,700 people since the end of April. The campaign in Sanaa province also involved spraying pesticides on the streets. Cholera is a waterborne disease which spreads in areas with poor sanitation. Last week, the UN slammed the warring parties in Yemen and their international allies for fueling the deadly cholera outbreak. Seven million people, including 2.3 million malnourished children, of whom 500,000 are severely malnourished, under the age of five, are on the cusp of famine, vulnerable to disease and ultimately at risk of a slow and painful death. Plans to ship as many as one million doses of cholera vaccine to Yemen are likely to be shelved over security access and logistical challenges in the war-torn country. The World Health Organization and the UN are still supporting 600 treatment centers and rehydration points in a bid to stem the outbreak. Oscar-winning actor Martin Landau has died in Los Angeles at the age of 89. Landau's most critically acclaimed performance was in the role of a washed-up Bela Lugosi in the 1994 film Ed Wood. It earned him an Academy Award for Best Supporting Male Actor. His career, which spanned seven decades, was launched by a part in the 1960s original version of Mission Impossible, in which he co-starred alongside then-wife Barbara Bain. Landau studied method acting, and as an acting coach helped the careers of the likes of Jack Nicholson and Angelica Houston. A life sentence with hard labor for a Jordanian soldier who killed three U.S. military trainers last year. A Jordanian military court handing down the sentence Monday. The soldier pleaded not guilty to premeditated murder. He killed the three trainers at the gate of a major airbase last November. Tensions between Washington and its Middle Eastern allies shot up after the incident. Jordanian authorities at first saying the soldiers shot the men when their car failed to stop at the base entrance. Washington, though, rejecting that and refusing to rule out that the soldier had a political motive. The United States uses Jordanian airfields to hit Islamic State positions in neighboring Syria, Jordan hosting several hundred U.S. contractors and U.S. F-16 fighter jets. British and EU negotiators are meeting again in Brussels for the second round of Brexit talks, with both sides saying the serious business begins now. The weekend saw more reports of a UK government split over future trading relations. But first, the talks will cover citizens' rights, the bill Britain must pay, and what happens to the border between Northern Ireland outside and the Republic inside the EU. We will now delve into the art of the matter. We need to examine and compare our respective positions in order to make good progress. For us it's incredibly important we now make good progress, uh, that we negotiate through this uh, and identify the differences so that we can deal with them and identify the similarities so that we can reinforce them. Uh, and uh, now it's time to get down to work and make this a successful negotiation. Thank you very much. Indeed. It'll be later in the week before both sides Thursday. brief the media again. Thursday. Now it's time for the nitty-gritty behind closed doors. Work. Yes, that's right, work. <laughs> a better-than-expected report card for China's economy, holding steady at 6.9% growth from April to June. Analysts figured the world's number two economy would lose momentum because Beijing's trying to contain some major risks. But for now, the usual suspects have kept things on track. Factory output and retail both growing at a fast clip. And while exports have recovered and property construction is booming, many expect policies later this year will stunt growth as Beijing tries to rein in surging housing prices and a rapid buildup of debt, which has ballooned to a dangerous 277 percent of the country's GDP. But a spike in worldwide demand for Chinese products could help ease that load. And with two quarters of expansion hitting higher than Beijing's target for the year, the government may find lower growth in the second half easier to swallow. Officials have been working to keep the economy at a pace, at least until this autumn's Communist Party Congress to choose China's top leaders.